Hello, African sports fanatics. Welcome to another episode of the Safari Soccer Show. I'm your host, Yvonne Eta. Today, I'm hosting a AFCON winner, to say so. Um, uh, maybe just introduce yourself, Sean, and uh, take us through your football journey. I know it's a, it's a long one, uh, from South Africa to the Premier League, uh, back to South Africa before you retiring, being a manager also, and your current club, uh, Galaxy. Maybe just a short history of your football journey. Okay, uh, thanks uh, Yvonne for having me on the show. Yeah. I'm Sean Bartlett, former Bofana Bofana striker. Yeah. Uh, started playing for Cape Town Spurs in South Africa and my journey obviously took me to America yeah. when M the MLS started in 1996. Yeah. After that, yeah. I managed to play in the 1998 World Cup, South Africa's first World Cup in France. Yeah. Uh, where we got knocked out of the group stages, uh, joined FC Zurich uh, in 98 and was there for two years okay. until I got a loan spell to go to Charlton Athletic in England, spent six years at Charlton, very successful, very fruitful, yeah. and returned to South Africa playing two years for Kaiser Chiefs, the biggest club in South Africa sure. with the most followers, mm -hmm. and then retired um, at the age of 36 at Bloemfontein Celtic which is the shirt you're wearing, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then stepped into coaching. It's yeah. always been a passion of mine to give back mm -hmm. and to transfer the knowledge and experiences I've gained. Mm -hmm. uh, started with Golden Arrows as assistant manager, became the head coach, got promotion with the club mm -hmm. and currently obviously uh, spent two years again as assistant coach at the Kaiser Chiefs mm -hmm. uh, before joining TS Galaxy where I'm currently uh, employed um, as an assistant coach to Owen de Gama. No, let's start with the, when you started playing. You began playing mm. for your church team and quickly developed a striking ability on the field. But also you yeah. are a talent cricketer, to say yeah. so. So at what point did you, uh, did you decide it's football and not cricket? Yeah, I think, you know, firstly, as any young person, you, you do sports uh, mm -hmm. socially, um, whether it be for school and for me, uh, it was church, mm -hmm. uh, and then to be part of a team. And uh, as you get older, you, you, you sort of focus on one sport. And like you've indicated, I was, I was reasonably good at quite a few sports, uh, mm -hmm. tennis, cricket, football. Mm -hmm. uh, and ironically, one of the people in the church told me, you're very good, you must go for a trial and yeah. see what happens. So he organized and arranged for me to go for a trial at Captain Spurs, mm -hmm. and which was a professional club at the time. Mm -hmm. And they actually liked what they saw. So I was very surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the focus really started on making sure I can make, uh, get a career out of football, yeah. which is something I love doing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and Captain Spurs was for me the, the first block in the, in the stepping stone uh, to greater things. Great, I think everybody likes football. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you started your career in Cape Town, which was your hometown, mm. then joined uh, uh, Major League Soccer, but left without, without leaving much of a mark and returned to South mm. Africa. Can you say that uh, the, this was that time of your career when things were not just uh, going as expected? Yeah, you know, it was very difficult. Um, also, you know, it's it's easy to say maybe I didn't leave a mark, but at the end of the day, it was a time where I was based in America and I had to fly back maybe once a month mm -hmm. to come and play for Bafana Bafana uh, qualifying yeah. uh, matches, uh, whether it be for, for AFCON or at the time, mm -hmm. obviously we were trying to qualify for World Cup in 98. So it was very difficult in the sense where it's a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. You fly 16 to 24 hours one way every time. Mm -hmm. And by the time I would get back to America, you know, uh, somebody else would take my place and you don't play. So mm -hmm. it was very, it was a tough time. Like you, you asked, um, all the traveling, not playing regularly. And then also for two years, I never had a break. We, we I would play in America from March to October. And then October to March, I would come back to South Africa, like they would call a loan spell. Yeah. And the first one was with Amazulu and the second one with Cape Town Spurs. So it was a tiring time. It was, was testing. It was frustrating at times, but these are all part of football and that made me a better player, I believe. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and so you joined the Premier League. And uh, when you joined the Premier League in 2000, you had a very a home debut, I think, to be mm. remembered, if to say, because you scored yeah. twice against Manchester United in a 3-3 draw. How was the experience for you? It was, it was daunting. It was nerve-wracking and exciting at the same time because yeah. not many people know this, but uh, Man United is a team I supported as a boy. Uh -huh. uh, I was with uh, Charlton Athletic for maybe 10 days and then put in a starting 11. So I didn't expect that, um, but was very happy, obviously, to play against uh, United. And, you know, everybody was asking, what are you going to do when you score? How are you going to celebrate? Um, <laughs> and I kept saying, that's not going to happen because uh -huh. Man United at the time was the best team in the world. You know, yeah, they, yeah. they won the treble, they won the FA Cup, the league, the Champions yeah. League. Yeah. So for me, uh, it was just, I was just happy to be on the field. And if you actually see the game and I scored the first goal, luckily one of the players caught me because I was just running. I was so excited. I just, <laughs> I couldn't celebrate. So yeah. for me, it was, it was a great moment. And, and like you said, score two goals against arguably the best team in the world. Yeah. It was a, a great achievement for me and, and for the club on the day, you know, to get a 3-3 draw coming from, 3-1, uh, you know, losing uh, was a great, uh, great result for us. But also talking of great achievement, uh, you also won the Premier League goal of the season in the 2006-2000-2001 season for your goal mm. against Leicester. How was yeah. the feeling uh, winning this goal? I think as an individual, it's always great. Like, fortunately for me also, the, on the day, it was the goal that obviously got us the result, which is mm -hmm. important. I've, I've always been a person that was, uh, you know, team-driven, mm -hmm. um, irrespective. If I don't score and I do well and the team wins, I'm also happy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think on the day, you know, the, the goal itself was one of those moments where everything just fell into place. Uh, you know, from making the run, creating space, and then obviously the technique as far as getting the volley on target. Um, I think that everything combined obviously gave me a chance to to win the goal of the season. And even that year, there was a lot of good goals that were scored in the Premier League, you know, from Van Nistelrooy to Steven Gerrard, uh, even Thierry Henry, the goal he scored against Man United, where he chipped and he hit it on the volley. So Mine had to be really good in order to win the goal of the season. And fortunately for me, enough people voted uh, for me to win the title. Right now from uh, the Premier League to PSL, uh, in, mm. you returned to South Africa and signed for Cape Zachi. Later in summer, uh, in 2008, you retired, then made a return to PSL <laughs> again. Uh, okay. yeah. Why? I <laughs> Why did you decide to come back and play football after retiring? Uh, it was obviously, firstly, when I, when I came back to Chiefs, it was about you know, the opportunity to play for the biggest club in, in the country. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody in South Africa, when you have an opportunity like that, you want to make sure that you take it and you don't let it go by you. So that two years for me was good. Um, then after that, the contract was not extended. So I decided to just stop football. Uh, but six months later, uh, my first coach uh, uh, at Cape Town Spurs yeah. was the coach at Bloomfield and Celtic. And they were in a little bit of trouble. He needed some experience. He needed some help. Okay. And I decided uh, to go back um, to see if I can help and assist, uh, avoid the club uh, getting relegated. So that was the main reason uh, for coming out of retirement and, and just assist in any way I could uh, to help my, my former coach. Uh, a lot of achievements with the national team. The first mm. time you made your debut, an international debut, was in a friendly against Lesotho in 1995, which is a dream come yeah. true to most of the players, and you cemented mm. your place at the national team. How was it when you first got a call to the national team? Yeah, I think uh, when I first got the national team call up, it was exciting, but also you know, in some way frustrating because I had to wait almost 18 months to make my debut. You know, at the time, okay. I was one of the young players in the national team. We had uh, players like Paul Masinga, uh, Mark Williams, Brendan Augustine. These were top strikers at the time. So as a young player, I had to wait. Uh, and when I made my debut against Lesotho, 
uh, in 95 and a few months later we had yeah. a tournament a four nations tournament against Zimbabwe where I scored a few goals okay. and I think that sort of uh, gave me a better chance of making the the starting lineup but even in 1996 um, to play in the nations cup yeah. I, I had to wait till the semi-final to to get my opportunity because Phil Massinga uh, was suspended so it was one of those things where when you get opportunity, take it with both hands and make sure nobody takes it away from you. And that for me was uh, everything I could possibly do. Okay. Talking of 1996, I believe it was a turning point for South Africa as a country. How did hosting yeah. us for uh, United the country for a common cause? Yeah, I think we were very fortunate enough um, the year before, okay. it, even obviously with the Rugby World Cup. Yeah. Uh, it started the whole process, you know, of uh, getting South Africans together through sport. Yeah. And when when the Springboks won the World Cup in '95, I think it was a great achievement. But we also know in South Africa that football is more supported. So, as a national team hosting the tournament, uh, the Afcon in '96, we had a massive responsibility on our shoulders to make sure we get success. Um, at first, nobody gave us a chance. You know, we I think we were back international football maybe just over four years mm -hmm. so we were still the baby you know and i don't i'm not sure how many people know but the nickname for bafana uh, for south africa is bafana bafana mm -hmm. which means the boys you know and and that's what what we were um in 96 we were the boys the small boys in international football or on the african continent so we had to really put in some great performances against big teams mm -hmm. uh Ghana, Tunisia, Algeria, in order to, to win that tournament. And also, I think music and football were instrumental in the, in the fight against apartheid. How was the feeling mm. winning the 1996 AFCON at home in South Africa? Yeah, I think the, the feeling itself, you know, the final alone, um, having 110, 15,000 people in the stadium and, wow. you know, the whole atmosphere and Without a doubt, uh, the biggest moment, obviously, of uh, Nelson Mandela coming onto the field, greeting yeah. everyone. Yeah. I think these were the moments you will cherish for the rest of your life, because as an individual, if you had uh, to play a part in, you know, reuniting the, the country, I think that moment for me was significant in, in every way, uh, for every footballer, for every human being. And for me as a player to have played a part in that uh, particular moment uh, was more than exciting, to be honest. Okay. Talking of Nelson Mandela, I think he had one of the greatest relationships with him. He even attended your yeah. wedding. How, how was a, a great <laughs> person like Nelson Mandela? Uh, how did you feel? Yeah, it's, it was a very strange moment because, yeah. you know, you never expect the, the president of your country to, yeah. to come to your wedding. Yeah. Um, and three days before the wedding, I get a call, he wants to come. Mm -hmm. um, and we had to make arrangements because obviously, it was a big moment for us uh, as, as a wedding couple. Uh, and even to have him at the wedding was a great uh, moment for both of us uh, as husband and wife. So it was, a, it was one of those days that, uh, like I said, it was probably the best wedding gift I could have asked for. But to have an icon of the country uh, attend your wedding, obviously it's, it's one of those moments that uh, not many people will have in their lifetime. And I managed to meet uh, the great Nelson Mandela so many times. And... It was always a personal, you know, interaction whenever we met. Okay, great. Uh, I think that that is uh, having a president in our wedding is one of the greatest. Uh, uh, I give one in that. Form. But yeah. away, f I, away from that, I think your generation is arguably the best that South Africa has ever produced, gracing mm -hmm. the World Cup and also Afcon. What was the spark in that generation? Yeah, I think for us was to make sure, like even now, um, is to, to transfer that knowledge and experiences to the next generation. Um, we had an unbelievable team. We had the success. Mm -hmm. But after the success now, how can we impact the next generation? And I yeah. think even the other day with Bafana Bafana beating Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the 1996 uh, players that was a coach. Yeah. So. I think for us as individuals and players of that squad is to make sure that we can make a difference going forward. Uh, quite a few of us now are in coaching. Mm -hmm. So that is the difference and the impact we can have uh, with the young or next generation. So we want to make sure, obviously, well, we want to bring back that success. Ultimately, that's the, the main focus and the main goal 
because as a nation, as a country, I think we have everything uh, to be successful and to get trophies again, but we have to do it together. But also talking of World Cup, uh, the World Cup 1998 wasn't a good uh, outing for South Africa. Mm. Was it stage fright or inexperience? And what lessons did you pick from the France World Cup? I think it was a combination of factors. Uh, inexperience, obviously, it was our first World Cup. Okay. I think a lot of players was excited, uh, were excited to be there, but maybe forgot actually that we had to do a job. And then off the field, it wasn't uh, that great, you know, having problems in the camps and with the coach and everything. So there was a lot of distractions also uh, that uh, kept us away from achieving our goals um, as a team. Uh, for me individually, obviously, it was good because I managed to score two goals in yeah. one game yeah. against Saudi Arabia. And I think that also put me on the, on, on the market uh, to, to better and greater things. And hence, I moved to, to Zurich uh, in Switzerland after the World Cup in, in France. But also, I, I think you, you also played alongside the uh, Fortune and also the Gwini Makati, who is currently the mm. top scorer of Bafana Bafana. How was it playing yeah. uh, um, uh, alongside these great people? Yeah, for me, it was an honor because obviously we're all from the same area uh, in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. um, growing up in, in the same town, it, it makes a massive difference. And I think when you make the national team, you know, uh, like you've said before, as any young boy or girl, you want to represent your country. Mm -hmm. and, and we managed to do that on so many occasions. Uh, like Benny and myself, Benny McCarthy and myself, we had a good relationship on the field. We scored a lot of goals together. Mm -hmm. And even now, both of us are in the coaching sphere. So. It's making sure, obviously, like we keep saying, is uh, to, to, to make that little bit of difference. And, and that's how you leave a legacy. Yeah. Not with the, the goals you score, winning trophies, but how can you impact people's lives in a positive way? So, but uh, yeah, Benny was your striking partner at Bafana Bafana. And you are the second after him, all-time mm -hmm. scoring striker. So was it due to uh, the competition, strong team, or a resourceful midfield? Yeah, I think it's a combination. Um, obviously, in order for any striker to score goals, you need to be provided with the right balls and proper services. Uh, and I think for us as uh, strikers, uh, Benny and myself, we had good midfielders yeah. like Quentin Fortune, like uh, Dauron Buckley, Halman Kalele, uh, these guys, Dr. Kamalo, that, was pro that were providing us with the service. So we got all the credit uh, for scoring the goals, but at the end of the day, it was team effort in order to get the ball in the back of the net. I'm just curious, where are the people like Fortuna, Mark Fish, the guys that you mm. had in the squad, where are they right now? Well, Quentin Fortune is still based in England. Mm -hmm. um, he's the assistant uh, manager currently at Reading mm -hmm. in the championship, which is obviously the division below the Premier League. Yeah. Mark Fish is doing a lot of uh, charity work in South Africa for the underprivileged and the people that uh, don't have uh, things uh, like we normally enjoy. Uh, Benny McCarthy, obviously, is a coach in South Africa. Eric Tinkler, also a coach in South Africa currently. Halman Mkulela, as I mentioned, is now the assistant coach for Bafana Bafana. And I think quite a few more. Andre Orenson, who used to be the goalkeeper, is the assistant coach at Supersport United. So most of the guys are, are in the football fraternity. Uh, trying to make a difference. Uh, I know Lucas Kharebe uh, is part of the SAFA technical team, uh, trying to build a better future. So we're all trying to do a little bit uh, in order to make a big difference. But also, uh, the PSL is among the top leagues in Africa. But Bafana mm. struggles to qualify for major tournaments. Is it the influx of more foreign players or the local players are reluctant? What do you think? Maybe just a personal opinion from you. Yeah, I think in my opinion, if I have to compare uh, maybe 1996 to yeah. currently, yeah. you look at the 1996 squad, mm -hmm. most of us, I think more than 75% of the squad was were playing in Europe. Yeah. So when you play in Europe, in my opinion, you compete against the best. Um, that is why most African players want to get to Europe, whether it be England, Spain, Italy, France, mm -hmm. Belgium. You want to go and show your class, your ability against the best players. And when you have games like that week in, week out, you bring that experience back, you, uh, you play for your national team, and that makes your national team also better. Currently, like you said, unfortunate part is the PSL is a big league, 
uh, not just in Africa, but in the world, and they're paying big salaries. Yeah. So players are losing that ambition of wanting to go to Europe to maybe earn more money. But it's not about the money. It's about competing against better quality players. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me is the reason why our national team uh, are not doing that well. Because if you compare to the rest of Africa, most of the national team players are playing in Europe. And that's why they're going ahead of us instead of us being in the forefront uh, of this uh, football uh, fight. Okay. But also let's talk about your former team case achieved. Uh... In 2020 season, I think they did better, but fell in the last minute to give Sundowns the title. Maybe yeah. just your thoughts on that and its current performance as well. Yeah, I think for Kaiser Chiefs, obviously, I think the last five, six years mm -hmm. has not been great. Mm -hmm. uh, for a big team like that, not to win any trophies, mm -hmm. it's always disappointing and, and frustrating for the fans mm -hmm. because uh, they support the team week in and week out. And like I said, Kaiser Chiefs has a very, very big following in South Africa. So it, it, it actually impacts the economy in, in certain ways because when Kaiser Chiefs win, uh -huh. productivity and everything goes up. So okay. that, that is the surprising thing. So it's been very disappointing. And obviously losing the league on the last day in 2020 mm -hmm. is not what the technical team in the club wanted. But, you know, sometimes these work out uh that uh, only god can explain we don't know what the reasons uh, were for that particular you know uh, uh unfortunate incident but i think even currently with kaiser chiefs uh, just making the top eight which is not a good achievement for them mm -hmm. they're supposed to compete for the league every season but yeah. making the top eight obviously uh, was a big achievement for the club yeah. for having had a really bad bad season in 2021 yeah, because uh, they were even celebrating making it to the top eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I've, maybe maybe <laughs> they can do us proud. You know, they're still in the in the semifinals of the CAF Champions League. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They have to play. They have to play wider. So that's happening next week and two weeks after. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they can turn the season around and maybe get some 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 luck or you know some silverware in the Champions League. Mm -hmm. Talking of Champions League, uh, do you think uh, by sacking their coach will affect their game plan against their opponents? Well, it's going to be interesting. Uh, obviously, it's never easy when you sack a coach and the new one has to come in and, you know, with two big games coming up, uh, will he have the success or not? Mm -hmm. um, but I think the same players are still there, so they know exactly what to do. They know what's at stake. Uh, and if they want to achieve anything, they know that they need, they need to do it together. So it's all in their hands. They've, they've got, uh, they can control the outcome of, this, of these results. And I think ultimately that's the important thing here is that if anything, they must do it for South Africa because they're the only South African team still in the Champions League uh, semifinals. Uh, you won, I think you... There's a question here that somebody sent me. He asked, uh, okay. yeah, he asked, uh, you joined uh, your current club uh, when you were uh, new to the PSL. You joined when they were yep. a bit lower, but then you finished the league at, I think, position nine. How was it uh, coaching such a club? Yeah, uh, when we joined the new technical team, we came in the middle of the season the, yeah. the club was at rock bottom of, of the table of the log yeah. so for us so us for us the, the the primary goal was to make sure to keep the team in the league uh, for another season um i think we achieved that with maybe three four games to go mm -hmm. uh which was great uh, and then it gave us another goal of may, maybe trying to make the top eight so it went until the final day where we unfortunately lost it out. Uh, we lost out to, to Kaiser Chiefs, uh, losing 1-0. Okay. Um, but I think for the club itself, uh, we did really well. And hopefully we can build on that for next season. Okay. Maybe just as we wrap up, John, uh, you, you are currently a coach and a police at the same time, of which I, I feel yeah. guilty right now because I don't want to take so much of your time. <laughs> you should be heading to Super Sport right now. But if yeah. given a chance to coach Bafana Bafana, who will you change first? to fine tune the team? Yeah, it's, it's, it's always a difficult task. I always believe that uh, the federation must make the right decisions in order to benefit the country 
um, and the coaching staff. Uh, if you do not support the people, then it's very difficult to get the results on the field. And my, my opinion, the problem has always been that there's no real long-term place in plan. Uh, and if you don't have a plan, uh, if you don't have a plan in place, then it's very, very difficult to, to go in and achieve goals short-term. So we need to make sure that if we're going to play a young team now, that we want to do better in 2026. I know everybody wants us to qualify for 2022, but that's short term. What are we doing in order to, to get the best out of these younger players? And that's going to take a bit of time. So I think for me as a coach is to make sure we get the right people in place. And I think so far they've been doing well. Also, just your last one, the players mm -hmm. as well, because the, the, the last weekend I had Matthew Booth on my show. And he talked about the financial crisis that players, the current footballers and ex-professional players go yeah. through. Maybe just your last words to the players as well. Yeah, I think it's been, uh, it's been one of those issues in South African soccer uh, that's been there for over two decades. Unfortunately, players even nowadays still do the same thing mm -hmm. and do not learn from the mistakes that players have made in the past. You know, they... They get a lot of money, but they do not invest or look after uh, the future plans uh, for them and their families. And I think that's one um, sort of uh, situation where Matthew, myself and other players have been looking at and see how we can change uh, the dynamics of uh, the players of South Africa. Because it's not nice when you're done playing football in South Africa and suddenly you don't have anything to show for it. So. I think uh, we're trying to set up some, some things to make sure, obviously, players are more secure, they invest properly uh, with their money, and then after football is to have jobs and different other uh, profiles uh, to keep them going and support their families at the same time. Thank you very much for gracing my show, but also I can't close without asking you this. South Africa is currently trending because I'm, I'm, I'm a piano, so which side are you? I'm a mm. piano or reggae? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Ama Piano. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to South Africa and dance to Ama Piano as well. Otherwise, thank you. Yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Yvonne. Yeah, I, really, well, I really well, appreciate the time. Thank you. And to our viewers, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Safari Soccer Show. Follow us on all our social well, media handles at Safari Soccer Show on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook at Soccer Safari. Thank you, Sean, and all the best. In thank there. you. With your team, Galaxy, and also can't wait to see you on Super Sports. Uh, right Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care.